now let's see this example construct quadruples triples indirect triples for the statement a plus b star c plus d minus a plus b plus c uh, so first we have to represent this equation this uh, instruction in the form of a three address code we know what is a three address code instruction in a three address code instruction each instruction should contain maximum three addresses and the right hand side should contain maximum one operator so let the first instruction is t1 is equal to a plus b so this a plus b result is available in t1 now next t2 is equal to calculate t2 t2 is equal to c plus d then after that we have to perform a multiplication operation t3 is equal to this a plus b result is available in t1 c plus d result is available in t2 uh, next a plus b plus c this a plus b result is already available in t1 so if we add t1 to c then we will get the next temporary variable so t4 is equal to t1 plus c where t1 stands for a plus b okay so next one t5 is equal to this a plus b into c plus d result is available in t3 minus a plus b plus c result is available in t4 so this is nothing but three address code for this instruction now we have to represent this three address code in the form of quadruple and triple so we know what is a quadruple quadruple means instruction should contain four fields the first field is op where op stands for operator the second field is arg1 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 stands for argument1 and the next field is argument2 it stands for argument2 that is nothing but second operator and the next field is result of that operation so quadruple contains these four fields So let the first instruction is stored at the address zero. Here we can take any address; it is our choice. Zero. So what is the operation which we are performing here? Plus. So operator is plus, and the left hand side argument. This is nothing but argument one. Y. Argument two is nothing but p, and the result is stored in t one. So t one is nothing but result. So next one. T two is equal to C plus D, so let that instruction is stored at one. So what is the operation we are performing? Plus first argument C, second argument D, result is stored at T two. Next one T three is equal to T one star T two, let that instruction is stored at two. So which operation we are performing? Star. Next argument one T one, argument two T two. Result t three. Next one t four is equal to t one plus c. So the operation is uh, let the instruction is stored at the address three. So here the operation is plus argument one is t one, argument two is c, and the result is stored at t four. Let the last instruction is four. Operation is minus argument one is t three, argument two is t four. And the result is stored at t5. So this is nothing but quadruple. Now let's take the second one. The second one is triple. Triple means three. So here the instruction contains three fields. The first field is operator. Second field is argument one. Third field is argument two. So O B argument one argument two. I let the first instruction is stored at zero address. Zero address. So here. Uh, the major disadvantage of quadruple approach is so in this example how many temporary variables are needed one two three five temporary variables are needed so we have to store that information in symbol table so we require much amount of memory in order to represent this three address code in the form of quadruple in order to overcome this problem we are using triples in a triple there is no need of any temporary variables okay so zero let the first instruction address is zero So let us take the first one. Uh, here the first one is a plus b. So the operation is plus. Argument one is a. Argument two is b. 
Next, let the second instruction is stored at one address. Operation is plus. Argument one is C. Argument two is D. Let the next instruction is stored at two. Here, this A plus B, A plus B result is available in zero. So, which operation we are performing? Multiplication operation. Star. This A plus B, A plus B result is available in zero. So, zero is nothing but argument one. C plus D result is available in 1. So 1 is nothing but argument 2. Next, let the next instruction address is 3. So let the next instruction address is 3. So what is the operator here? Here, this A plus B, this A, here we are performing which operation? Plus operation. So plus here, OP. OP, argument 1, next one, argument 2. So this is nothing but the continuation. Okay. So OP, argument 1, argument 2. So next one, A plus B plus C. So here we are performing plus operation. So plus, this A plus B result is available in 0. So 0 is nothing but argument 1. Next one is uh, C. So argument 2 is nothing but C. Okay. So last instruction, let that address is 4. So which operation we are performing? Minus operation. A plus B into C plus D. That result is available in 2 address. And the next one is A plus B plus C. That address is available in 3. So in this way, we can represent this uh, 3 address code in the form of triple. So the major advantage of this approach is there is no need of any temporary variable CN. And the last one is indirect triples. Indirect triple is also similar to triple, but we have to create one more table. So that table is, the table contains uh, two columns. The first column contains some pointers. Let the pointers are 100, 101, 102, 103, where 100 points to the first triple. What is the first triple? Zero. 101 points to the second triple. 102 points to the third triple. 103 points to next one. 104 points to 4. Okay, So this is nothing but indirect triple. So in indirect triple, we can have two tables. This is the first table and this is the second table. In the first table, pointers pointing to triples. Whereas in the second table, we have a triple like this. So in this way, we can represent this instruction in the form of three address code as well as part triple, triple and indirect triple.